Hello everyone, uh, welcome to our mentorship session on engineers. Um, this is a Careers Now program brought to you by Food and Beverage Ontario and we are delivering mentorship sessions, uh, job fairs as well as um, offering free um, essential training, uh, job ready training through our program. So um, at some point please create your profile at jobseeker.careersnow.ca to access um, all of that and check out the events we have coming up. Um, I'm your host, Nicole Galacci, and uh, we're here with three um, awesome speakers today, all have different roles in the food industry, but have um, an, uh, an engineering background. And I will pass it over to Shwana, who will introduce herself and her, um, her own story in terms of how she became uh, working in the food and beverage industry. Thanks, Shwana. Thank you, Nicole. And uh... Thank you for having me here. Um, so hi everyone, uh, my name is Swarna Ari Kumar and I am a senior packaging engineer at Mars Canada. Um, so just to give you kind of a, a glimpse of my career journey, um, I graduated from U of T uh, from chemical engineering and I was always fascinated about kind of the manufacturing industry, um, understanding how things were made, produced, um, but after graduation, I really didn't know which direction I wanted to go. Uh, and for me, I graduated right when recession hit. Um, so it was very difficult finding a job. And so I took on the first opportunity um, that I got, and that was as a quality technician at Mars Pet Care. Um, so I was in, in the plant um, and collecting samples, testing. Um, and I think one thing that I really realized after I got into the food industry was as an engineer, how many um, you like you can go into um, product development, packaging development. And I think two things that really helped me grow, especially in the first couple of years of starting my career, um, was really connecting with kind of um, the associates out in the plant, really understanding um, how the process worked, um, but also taking on some extra projects. Um, it was a way for me to really understand the different areas within production, uh, whether it's product development, process optimization, um, but also an opportunity for me to really showcase my skills as well and build on my experience. Um, so those two things I found really helped me um, grow in the beginning. And um, what really got me into packaging was I would see associates running line trials. And I was very curious about the packaging, um, how they came up with package designs, how they came about running line trials. And it was never something I, I, I knew about or really understood. So I expressed my interest to my manager at that time. And he said, um, reach out to the, the packaging development manager, set up a one-on-one -on -one, um, and express your interest and see if there's opportunities uh, to job shadow. And initially I was, I was very hesitant. I didn't know um, what to expect. Um, I was really shy about kind of setting up that initial connect but honestly that was the best thing I did it really opened up that opportunity to get my uh, foot in the door into packaging development I um, because of that like when that opportunity for a, a packaging technologist came forward um, they reached out asked if I was interested I applied and I got I, I became the packaging technologist at that time and this was um, kind of my first um, step into packaging development and I've been in packaging development for 10 years now. I started off as a technologist, um, really focusing in pet care. Um, and with Mars, I think one opportunity is that it's not just within one segment. It's not just pet care that we work with. We work with foods as well as um, Mars Wrigley. So there it really opportunity for us to expand. Um, and I don't think you, a lot of people are aware of that. Lots of uh, different segments, different brands, different products that you're working with. So um, a lot of opportunities to really learn and grow. And so I started off as a technologist um, and then um, a, a packaging scientist um, and now a, a senior packaging um, engineer. Um, and so um, really for me, what I really love about packaging is that opportunity to, 
really the technical piece, but also the creative piece. It's not, I get to be on the floor, run line trials, connect with um, um, associates um, in the plant, but also work with so many different functions. You're working with finance, you're working uh, with finance on cost optimization opportunities, you're working with supply chain on creating efficiencies, um, you're working with uh, quality, um, you're working with um, customer marketing and sales, understanding the, the retail landscape, um, how what consumers are looking for, consumer research. Um, so you're, you're, every day is so different. You're, you're, you're not working, working on the same thing every day. You're learning something new every day. Um, so that's really what I love about packaging and why I've been, I've been in packaging development for 10 years now um, and um, really love it. Um, lots of opportunities to grow um, within R&D. Um, it's not just in, in packaging, there's product development as well and quality. So lots of opportunities in R&D as an engineer to, to really grow. Um, and if there was kind of two, two key takeaways, I would say um, that I think are really important as, part, as you think about your career development, um, I would say is uh, relationship building, build that network. Um, it, it's so important. Um, it, it's those relationships. You'll you'll be able to meet a, a great mentor. Uh, I know personally, that's how a um, mentor was really instrumental in helping me grow uh, within packaging development. Um, so I would say that's really important as you're thinking about your career um, advancements. Um, but also remember that you own your development. I think that's one thing that I I um, really um, embrace is that you you really own your development. Don't wait for somebody to come out and um, help you find that opportunity. If you're interested, ask that question, seek opportunities um, and ask those questions, be curious. That's awesome. Thank you so much. Um, I have a bunch of questions, but I'm gonna wait till the end to, to ask uh, all, all three of you. And I should add now that a few more people have joined, if you have questions, um, please feel free to put them in the chat and then I'll ask our speakers at the end. So um, thank you. We'll, we'll talk to you again in a minute. And we're going to go to um, Carson next. Hey, so yeah, my name is Carson Walsh. Uh, I graduated from the University of Guelph with a degree in biological engineering. Um, really love the, 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 first, the first career talk there because I think a lot of the similar themes uh, I'm going to touch on, especially that the food industry has a lot of interconnectedness. So the connections you make at one place, um, you'll end up seeing them 10 years down the line. Um, but yeah, so my career path, I started off at the University of Guelph in the co-op program. And I really, really loved the co-op program there because I got to experience a number of different places uh, to kind of see what I enjoyed and what I didn't. I started off uh, working for an agriculture company, a pioneer doing canola research which was super interesting. The agricultural side of food is a you know, super important part of our supply chain, but it didn't interest me as much as uh, my next two co-ops, which were in, in more food manufacturing. So my second co-op was at Kraft Foods making cheese. Uh, and then my final one was with Mondelez making Oreos uh, in the R&D department. So those two co-ops is where I really found uh, continuous improvement and that sort of side of engineering application uh, and that's what I enjoyed the most and that's how I transitioned from the R&D co-op position to a position as a process engineer um, with Mondelez in their Cadbury chocolate uh, division. So in terms of what a process engineer is doing kind of day in day out you're you're trying to look at losses so no system runs perfectly no matter how well the packaging is designed um, you know, there might be stops at your packaging machine, there might be quality defects, there might be, you know, any sort of reason why your machine might not be running at 100% efficiency. So the goal of the, the process engineer, in my experience, has been to try and find out what's causing those losses so that you can put together projects or, or different procedures to hopefully make them go away. Now that sounds very, very simple when you put it in one sentence like that, but the paths you can take to try and get 
um, those losses eliminated can get very complex. Sometimes you might need a capital project because you know the design of the machine um, needs some sort of improvement. Sometimes it is a new set of parts. Sometimes it's just changing the way that the, the operations team is, is modifying it. Um, but there's so many continuous improvement tools and so many different ways that you can kind of grow and learn in the continuous improvement world. Um, that's what I've, I've really enjoyed about the, the process engineer position. Now, I've had a couple positions since. Um, for the past two years, I was working in quality compliance, which seemed like an interesting shift from engineering. You know, I have no, I had no formal training in quality, no background in in kind of laws and regulations. But you know, to to the points earlier, the, the food world is so transferable. So all the things that I had learned in operations prepared me really, really well for quality because I knew the processes, I knew the people. And having that, it made learning just the, the laws and regulations and how to apply them um, super simple. And it's actually kind of funny, the, the second point about the connections and networks. So um, just today was my second day actually with Mars Pet Care. Um, so I've joined, joined in uh, the operations department. Uh, so just had my second day now at Mars Pet Care. So it looks like I have a, a colleague on the call. So I, I appreciate that. I didn't even put that together. <laughs> hmm. that's, that's really funny. Um, so what originally drew me to food, like way, way, way before I was even in university was I had a friend who's, who had a parent that worked in food. And anytime I went, they always had a freezer full of ribs or chicken or, or anything we wanted. So they, you know, what are you hungry for? Crack open the freezer and, and they have it available. But uh, since then, it's, it's the ownership in the products that you're making. So it feels really great to be able to take ownership and see your products on the shelf, start a product that you helped design or, or a product that you helped improve the quality of, uh, just something that you're seeing day to day with your hands and then someone else is going out and, and buying and eating is, is really a source of pride for me. Um, but yeah, I think that sums up my, my experience as a whole. I think the, the two biggest takeaways for me is whatever experiences you're learning, it, they'll all transfer really, really well, even if it doesn't seem super obvious at the time. Um, you can move from operations to quality, back to operations, R&D, like they're all very transferable skills you'll pick up. And the second one is the relationships you build because it's, it's kind of the same people no matter where you go and, and someone you worked with one, two, three years ago, you might end up seeing later down the line. So thanks. That's definitely true. Never burn bridges. You just never know when you're going to uh, be at a function and across the table from someone that you used to work with or you know at an event. So I can uh, totally agree with that. Um, let's go to uh, Purush next. Um, thank you for sharing your story. Hello everyone. Um, um, my name is Purushwatam and Elu Malai. Uh, definitely it's a pleasure to be here to share my experience with the young grads. And this is my first time I'm doing this. I'm, I'm planning to do this continuously. And thank you so much for creating this opportunity, Nicole. And thanks, thank you so much, right? Um, I'm working as a process engineer with uh, Give and Go Prepared Foods. Uh, this is my fourth year with the company. Um, so to give a short summary about the company, we make, uh, uh, we are the top, one of the top leaders in snack manufacturing. We make uh, brownies, cupcakes, and we have actually 300 SKUs. And I go between a lot of sites. So that gave me a lot of uh, experience working with different products. On my education background, I finished my uh, undergrad, which is bachelor's in chemical engineering from back home, India. Then I was working there for two years in India. I, was, I worked in an engineering consultant uh, company where I was designing plants, but I was actually learning to design water treatment plants. So I was uh, spent my initial one and a half years to understand the water treatment plant and how to design them. And I also got some experience in commissioning. And then I spent the uh, next six months in with the oil manufacturer to uh, uh, to give them a technical service site to help them out in the technical service. To come to Canada to do my master's. Um, so 2006-17, I graduated from University of Ottawa. 
I got my master degree in chemical engineering, and then I started uh, the, the the after that you you there's a real uh, real headache, right? You need to get a job. So because I'm addressing the young graduates here, I just wanted to tell them be patient, be patient, and keep applying, and I know stick to the industry. That is friends, don't change your industry. Just be open to the position that you you know. Uh, if it's related to the in engineering, con like you know, all the operation positions are okay. Just go join the company, start with the uh, junior role, spend some time on the floor. So that's what I keep telling my friends too, who graduated. So uh, after uh, my graduation, it was one year, it was really tough. Um, you know, I was trying to get a job. I was focusing most on engineering jobs. I I apply all the jobs with engineering title. And um, you know it didn't it didn't work out well, so I had to step back and you know think about what I should be doing different, right? So I started applying to all the positions, and I ended up as a process uh, area lead with Give and Go. That's my first job in Canada. So in this job, I basically you know look after the production, help the machine operators and supervisors with any task, and I was I started my work in the afternoon shift. Um, it's it's more like a manual plan where, where I joined, so it gave it gave me an opportunity to learn uh, the machines. Uh, some point I have to run the machines when the operators are not there, so it was actually fun and interesting. And I told myself this is going to be your intern after graduation, right? You're going to study, learn a lot. So, um, so I was I was taking notes on the site, like okay, these are the areas to improve because I already worked in with the oil and gas uh, in the food uh, oil manufacture, so I know these steps can be improved and these steps can be improved. I was just taking those notes and um, one day I got a chance to uh, share those experience with the plant manager and I didn't expect, he loved it. He, he was like, oh, that's great, Purush. Can you put them in the slide and you know, show it to me one day, right? So he gave me time and, and that was my per first presentation too. So I was like excited and I showed him all these uh, things that you can improve and he said, that's good. Uh, can, do, you want a, do, you, do you want a team or something, right? So and after two months, I got a call from him. Like, um, I need some help on the continuous improvement side. Um, you know, five is the plant and all these ideas that I told him before. And I got an opportunity to work. And then that, that really opened up my mind. I learned a lot. And that's how I ended up in the process engineering role with the same company. Um, uh, to be honest, that's that uh, I, I would say, the, I, the decision that I made to take the process area lead um, helped me to grow to this position where I am at because I didn't I didn't stick to one uh, uh, I didn't stick to the mindset of okay engineering I should get an engineering job no so it is just about learning how do you apply yourself to the in, uh, industry and there's a lot there's a lot of opportunities in the in uh, in, in food manufacturing especially you know in operations side like um, Carson mentioned. This quality you can you can transfer your knowledge to different industries maintenance coordination project engineering so um, in day to day uh, in my job I, I deal with a lot of um, these continuous improvement uh, um, initiative that has been created by the plant manager for example um, you know line one is having 10 percent waste right so that waste can be from any part from the cutting or baking or decoration uh, so there's a lot of a lot of areas I need to go and check and collect data and improve it. So that kind of expanded my knowledge how to approach these problems. And um, in an industry, process engineering is important where you where you get a chance to connect with multiple departments where, where the projects are generated. You go understand the process. Uh, you will try to make it more lean. Uh, you know, reduce waste, for example, reduce the giveaway, for example. So that that those are the things I do, I do in a day to day. Uh, you know, in my in my job. And this last four years with the company, I would say I learned a lot. I, I definitely got a lot of opportunity to grow. Um, and um, this this uh, what I would say to the end graduate is uh, keep uh, keep applying. And don't lose hope and uh, master Excel. So Excel is something which is, I know this people graduate with uh, Excel and they have this Excel in their curriculum. I know that, but you know, in industry, what I'm seeing, that is something they need to master it. Because if you're applying as an young graduate, learn Excel, learn how to handle it, compare the data, learn some of the lean techniques. What are the graph that you need to know as a basic level, right? To start with. 
that will help you to understand the problem, to solve the problem. That those are the tools you need as an young young graduate when you address these problems in the industries. So definitely, I would say you know spend some time, burn Excel, and um, try to jump into all any technical roles. You know, as a fresher out of the industry, of out of the college, try to jump into any technical roles. Try to you know spend some time in the floor, right? Because uh, there's an interesting story, right? Um, I was given a project and. Um, I was trying to solve it with my team. I, you know, I was trying to collect data, and this person uh, who's a machine operator, he spent 15 years with the with the, with the equipment, same equipment. So he was looking at me, and you know, uh, two days, three days passed, and he, he told me, Purush, you know, I know what you're trying to solve, and this is exactly you need to do. I was like, mm, okay. I I was like hesitant, right, to take this opinion, but I I still tried, but it worked, right? So that is that is something uh, you learn from the flow because those people are actually running your equipment. They know a lot, that's their baby, right? So they have spent most time than the process engineer. So spending time for in the floor is important as a young engineer uh, while joining the company, understand the process, you know, talk to the operator, communication is the key. Uh, you know, you need, to, you need to maintain a good communi uh, relationship with the operators, with all the supervisors and, you know, the management leaders. So communication is the key and don't hesitate to share your opinions because that is something I learned in a hard way. Don't hesitate to share your opinions and, you know, no idea is a bad idea until you try. You have to give a try. There's a trial and error. You need to try it out to find out if this is a good idea, bad idea. Don't hesitate. And, um, you know, this industry is huge. This cannot stop and it won't stop. Even in COVID, we saw it. We were classified as essential uh, workers and this industry cannot stop. And in North America, I feel there's a lot of opportunities and there's a lot of requirements. And you know, for young graduates out there, uh, food industry is never going to stop. And there's a lot of opportunities you can explore and you learn. Uh, definitely, you should consider applying to the roles in food industries. Um, and uh, about uh, applying and you know LinkedIn. LinkedIn is the best bet now. I used Indeed before, but now I see LinkedIn has opened up really wide and they've updated their uh, the way of applying jobs. So I think um, keep connecting to people. Networking is the key. Uh, keep your uh, profile active. Um, you know, keep put your uh, put even even if you don't have experience uh, with the industry, try to you know create a good profile. Refer to people who has already doing good in the industry see how they have created their profile and you know keep your profile uh, interesting that's that's something i would say to the young students out there and you know open to be open to all the entry level jo jobs and keep learning that's awesome advice um we can open it up to questions if anyone has any questions please please feel free to add them to the chat i've got a bunch um as each of you are speaking, I'm thinking of different questions. So uh, um, as you're speaking, but I do have some that I had already thought of, which is, I guess the first one, um, did anyone come and talk to you about careers in the food and beverage industry um, when you were at school? Like, cause this is one of the things that I had noticed when I first started food grads and when I was going out to different um, schools, um, I went out to Mac, I think it was, and um, I think it was about 200 engineering students and, maybe two had even thought about the food and beverage industry as somewhere that they might have a, an opportunity to to work and advance in their career so um you know Carson you want to go ahead with that one or like yeah yeah sure so I actually got very lucky um when I was finishing high school and kind of looking at my my options for school um the recruiting uh, person for Guelph Engineering said go into food go well, into food yeah there you you're go. gonna get a job <laughs> There's, there's amazing career opportunities. Um, if you're not sure, how about food? And I was like, yeah, sure, whatever. Um, and just kind of tailored my, my university experience to that. And I, I'd say it worked out great. Yeah. Well, and to Bruce's point, um, it's, it's recession proof. It's, um, you know, pandemic proof. If anything, the, you know, from what I hear, the feedback, um, when other industries were suffering, certainly on the food uh, you know, service side as well, but other industries were suffering, um companies couldn't get keep food on the shelf you know especially right. comfort food you know what was your experience through COVID? Uh, yeah oh, sorry take that one go ahead go ahead Cass. I, oh, I, was just, I was just gonna say to, to nicole's point that um something you see is when, when 
companies, especially food companies, have to kind of tighten up the belts for for difficult times. Like the last place to feel that pinch is operations because that's where like the, the plant is where the you know the product is made, that's where the value is added. So um, you know, you marketing and, and sales and stuff like that might might struggle, but but uh, in recession times, like operations is is pretty resilient. Yeah. Bruce, go ahead. Yeah, like during the operation, like to Carson's point, we didn't we didn't have crew to run the on the plan, but still we kept the operations up and to the industry, like I mentioned, it won't stop like we saw it before. And uh, getting getting people to work was a difficult part. Uh, even now, I know industries are struggling to get the talent inside the uh, facility. So uh, to answer your questions, uh, during it, it is the industry won't stop and they need a lot of ink talent to support them and there's a lot to learn and grow. Mm. Swana, do you have anything to add there? Yeah, I would echo everything that Carson and Fisher was saying. It it's like there's it doesn't stop the production. I think it it's definitely the labor shortage that um we're seeing a lot and hearing a lot of, but there's that opportunities there. It's mm -hmm. we're actually looking for more um associates and um grads to join companies to support with production. And it's true. I, I, when you mentioned you were just starting out during the recession, I think you said 2008. I was a recruiter back then, and um, I, I work, I've always worked in the food industry. And other sectors were suffering, but the food industry was still hiring. Um, I guess to to Carson's point about different areas. So the luxury items maybe weren't selling, but all the value items were because people were, were watching the pennies a little bit more. But um, yeah, I think it's interesting that. You know, people think of food service, they think of restaurants and they think of the food industry, but they don't they don't look at the food manufacturing um, industry as a place to work. And I think it's like number one employer now in, in manufacturing, 120 are employed in this sector, yet it's not top of mind, which is mind boggling to me. So um, and every and all the senior people that I tend to work with, um, you know, through the lens of a, as a recruiter. Uh, most have an engineering background, you know, the, the um, you know, in the operations, I should say. So, you know, whether it's supply chain, whether it's the plant operations, you know, it, it's typically when I would get an order uh, for a search, it would be, I need someone with an engineering background, you know, the education. So, um, you know, I think you're pretty insulated once you're, once you're in, you, you, you don't need, I guess that's my next question. Would you ever look outside the food industry? Anyone, like, um, feel free to jump in. Are you in that's now good. for good? <laughs> yeah, that's an interesting question, right? Because um, I've spent like two years in the water treatment and then uh, four years in food and a short term in oil and gas. So definitely after the pandemic, before pandemic, I would have had a different answer. But now this is, it's not that I won't go, but there's a lot, right? And the industry is strong. And even in food industry, there's a lot of, I belong to food, snack manufacturer, there's meat. There is um, dairy and there is uh, leaves. So there's a lot of areas can be explored in food. Um, to be honest with you, I would like to stick with food industry for a while and explore the opportunities. Swana, do you want to jump in there? Yeah, I, I don't see myself leaving the food industry. I think mm -hmm. uh, there's so many opportunities and um, I, I love it. Definitely wouldn't leave. Mm -hmm. Carson? <laughs> yeah, same answer. It, it would be hard to get me out. Mm -hmm. Well, and I, I think it's, uh, yeah, well, I think there's a perception issue. Um, anyone jump in on this, but one of the things we found through, through um, Taste Your Future back in 2017 and, and then now with Careers Now, and, and you talk about the labor challenges, I think people think of hair nets and factories and, um, and and minimum wage and there's all these kind of perceptions and myths that float around about working in the industry. Um, maybe Push, maybe you want to, to jump in here. What is what do you think the biggest misconceptions are? I mean, with robotics, with um, automation and innovation, technology, like have you seen it changed over the years? And what do you think the biggest misconceptions are about the industry? Um. Uh, sorry, Nicole, can you can you uh, repeat the question? Yeah, absolutely. Mm. So I think that there's lots of um, misconceptions out there mm. about working in the food sector. And, mm. um, you know, with robotics, 
technology automation. I know that everyone within the industry, different companies, uh, different factories have different levels of that. Mm-hmm. Um, and you know, you guys know more about this stuff. Um, have you seen it change over the years that you've been in in the industry in terms of um, automation and, and right. you know mm-hmm. uh, technology affecting your job? And what would you say were the biggest misconceptions about working in the industry? Right. Yeah, definitely. Uh, you know, industries are trying to um, automate uh, wherever they can, right? Because that's going to two things. That's going to eliminate a lot of error. And few products like I mine like I move between different sites. For example, we make cupcakes, right? The cupcakes needs robots, and the the icing needs to sit on the center. Otherwise, it's a defective product. That's uh, that that requires more automation, right? Because if if it's a manual process, there's going to be a lot of defects and waste. So it really depends on the product what they make, and and in in few units we don't even have robots. It's just the equipment stamp and we cut and roll, and there is no automation there. So it really depends on what product that company is making. For sure, there's a lot of uh, money flowing in, in the automation. You know, like I said, it's going to eliminate an error, but uh, the misconception is you need people to solve problems and um, the robots cannot do everything, right? Even, you know, working with robots, uh, um, there's an interesting story, um, but yeah, I just don't want, uh, so the robots can, so one operator, one machine operator was trying to fix the robot and, you know, all of a sudden, boom, he had icing all over it. So it's not that <laughs> robot is gonna solve your problem, it's gonna make your process easier Right, it's going to increase your productivity and reduce your different. But you need people, you need operators to operate robots, right? So, there's, there's, if if the industry is shifting towards more automation, you need more people to work around the automation. That that was my comment on that. Swana, do you want to jump in? Anything to add? Yeah, I think the the automation piece. I think the misconception is is that we're eliminating um, people and putting in equipment or new systems or, but in, in reality, it's these, the automation is really to create efficiencies and really um, help make, whether it's the production or what you're doing, um, pick out that non value added work and create more um, efficiency. So you have um, time to spend on uh, optimizing or, uh, cost reductions or um, wh- whatever the area of focus you're working on. It, it's really not about eliminating the headcount, but creating efficiency so um, associates can work on more value-added work. Yeah. Carson, what's your, your take on that? Yeah, in terms of the, the misconception side, something I've seen is that people, especially people who are graduating with engineering degrees, um, are a little bit hesitant to apply to positions in food that don't say engineer in the job title. Um, like whether it's a quality technician or, you know, something in operations, a team leader. Um, there's with like, especially with the automation, but with, with any job in a food manufacturing site, everything is technical. There, there is no position that doesn't end up with you becoming a technical expert if you want to do well. So if, if you have an engineering degree and you're worried that, oh, if I'm a, if I'm a team leader or I'm a quality technician, I'm not going to be able to build my skills to, to you know, make me a successful um, engineering pract- practitioner or you know, problem solver in the future, um, I, I would disagree with that. I think if you are taking any sort of job in food manufacturing, you're going to build those technical skills and you're going to be setting yourself up for success. That's uh, great advice. And that leads me on to um, my next question around. So you have your all have formal education, obviously, an engineering background. What would you recommend to um, a new grad that perhaps isn't finding a position? uh, Parish, you mentioned Excel, become like a, you know, an expert in Excel. Are there any other courses or skill development, like perhaps something that you look for when you're hiring in in your own team? Um, Swana, you want to go ahead with that one? I think um, in terms of skills, it really depends on kind of what role you're applying for. I don't, um, and I think really focusing on um, 
your peer relationships, how you your soft skills, are, I think, are critical when you're applying for any position. I think technical, I think you can learn um, and grow within the role. So whether you, like I went into packaging development, not having a background in packaging, um, you can build on that technical piece. It's it's more of um, the 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 interpersonal skills and is what you really what I I believe like you need to really showcase during the the initial interviews um, and having um, those initial conversations and when you kind of enter you kind of really building your yourself. Yeah, I'd agree. It's they're tough. Soft skills. Kids hear that. You know, young people hear that all the time. Soft skills, soft skills. But they, they, they. It is so important. Um, having that good communication skills, for example, especially on the line. Um, I've I've talked to many of the staff that QA techs that you know have to stop a line for some reason, and they're talking to people that are maybe more senior than them, um, like age wise and in terms of their career, and it's very daunting you know, to, thing to, to, to do. So um, I would agree with that. Carson, what are your thoughts there? Yeah, could, couldn't have said it any better. It's it's 100% soft skills. And just a, a small story that can kind of maybe drive that home. Uh, when I first started as a process engineer, um, I was very focused on the outputs, the results. So go to the line uh, and ask the people around, hey, line stop, what's going on? How was your waste for the past hour? What are your outputs? Um, and what started happening was I'd go to the line and everyone would ignore me, like <laughs> just wall of silence when I, when I came to the line. Uh, but what they were, and I'm glad they did, what they were doing was teaching me to go there first and say, hello, good morning, how are you, right? You, you need to be able to, to build rapport with your team. Um, and like at the end of the day, everyone's a person, you, you wanna be able to kind of have that, that, that connection, right? So, so for me, uh, they taught me, Go to the line first thing you do is say hello good morning how are things um and once you have that little person to person exchange then you can get into the 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 meat of, of problem solving and stuff like that so soft skills yeah brush what would you add there yeah i think uh, swan and Carson summed up well it definitely soft skill and you know to be uh, to me um if i'm looking to you know hire somebody i would I would see is passion. I want them to be open, right? Because all the industries have their SOP. Like any industry you go, they have their SOP and you know they, they will train you for sure, right? That's one week, two weeks. They, nobody's gonna ask you to do your job one day. So they need to be open to learn. And that's something I really look forward. They should be passionate and they should be willing to learn. And then respect to others' jobs. So, you know, if, if, if you are gonna work with the group, like food manufacturing is, is not, uh, sitting in your desk and you know looking at the computer, no, you are gonna deal with you know uh, a lot of people. So you need to pay, you need to give respect to each other's job, and then you should be able to communicate properly. Uh, so the way they understand, because uh, like I said, that's something I learned because I'm I'm from a country uh, you know where English was not the uh, primary language, right? So I learned on my way. So initially it was hard for me, and later. You know, I know what to talk, like how to how to communicate with, you know, people who work on the floor, right? You need to be more respectful. You know, they they should feel that they are important in the job too. So that's that's many things that you need to cover. And, you know, communication, key, respect, and then willing to look. Those are the three things I I definitely wanted to look into. Nengrat. Yeah, I I mean, it's um, it's usually a, it's sort of like a given, you think, but people don't you know, think about these things. And um, Carson, I like your example. I remember um, hearing, uh, you know, over the years working with plant managers and always the best ones are the folks that can walk through and they know people's names. I know they ask about, you know, did, did Bob win, you know, Bobby win at the game last night, you know, and they, they know about people's kids. And that it's it's so important to make people feel valued and um, and seen, right? And I think, I think one of you, I can't remember who made the point that, um, they're in that job day in, day out. So they know the machinery. They know how to support you and make you better in your role um, and help you as, as well as, you know, you're giving them that respect, like you mentioned, and, and supporting them. So I think that's fantastic advice. Um, one of the things that I, when we, when we try to inspire young people to explore careers in the food industry, I'm a big advocate for the food industry. I've been in it for years, you know, because 
we all eat. I mean, I think everyone should have a vested interest in this industry. And, um, you know, I, I often say, um, not just because it's a, a career path where you're going to have a job for life, you know, because it's not going to go away. We, we're, that's not going to change. But more so, you know, you hear so many times um, the, the, the young generation coming in, they want purpose, they want meaningful work, they don't just want a paycheck. How would you address that in your role in terms of, you know, what impact in the world or purpose does your job as an engineer have in the food industry? And I think maybe, Swana, with regards to packaging, maybe you can um, unpack that, no, no pun intended, a little bit more, because I always say, you know, we're worried about what's going in the ocean, and you know, um, what, what is not biodegradable and all that sort of thing. Do you work much with marketing to actually design that stuff? Can you kind of talk a little bit more about that? Yeah, and sustainability is such a key focus of packaging development right now. And um, really, I think that with our role, we we have that opportunity to really influence the decisions that are made in terms of what material we're using to ensure that uh, we're developing um, packages that are better for a circular economy. So. Um, it's really being able to influence those decision and and collaborate I think with marketing and influence them as well as to making recommendations. Um, marketing may sometimes uh, the 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 package um, material may impact the quality of the print, um, ensuring that you you influence them and in kind of um, understanding the benefits um, uh, of the package is so important as we we think about kind of the in life uh, of the package um, and I think in our role we got to think of it uh, from end to end um, from a, the supplier perspective where are they sourcing um, the material from how is the material produced the the ink coverage um, is the ink um, that they're using to um, meet their the recyclability stream um, how is our our package going to be recycled or is it going to be composted I think um, taking into account and um, and that's where I think it's it's so important. Um, it's not just marketing that we're working with. We're working with commercial. We're working with um, finance to understand the cost implications, but also the end uh, supply chain to understand where, from a consumer's perspective, are we labeling the packages correctly so that it's actually being used and um, put into the right streams and on how it was designed to. So I think it's. There's so much that's um, evolving every day in the in the world of sustainability, and we're learning every day um, uh, as we're developing new packs and really working towards um, meeting our commitments. I'm guessing you have quality as well that are saying, "Well, we need you know shelf life and all that exactly. sort of thing." So you're working with every department, every department, um, plus like quality, uh, as you said, sh shelf life is such a critical piece. Um, ensuring it doesn't impact the quality of our product um, and it could withstand the distribution um, piece and packages don't start opening up um, um, because we're looking at different uh, material um, and gets to consumers uh, without impacting that quality. It, it's a very uh, complicated and uh, uh, stream that we, we have to evaluate as we're designing a pack and collaborating with so many different teams and really understanding um, the technical piece um, is so important. It's a big job, <laughs> that's what I'm hearing. <laughs> Carson, what would you add there as a, as a on sort of the process engineering side of things like waste, that kind of thing? Yeah, for me, it's it's food waste. Um, you know, you see lots and lots of numbers about how much food is, is wasted before it even makes it to someone's doorstep. Um, and it's, it's a ton of food and, and you, you see it being in the manufacturing site. So as a process engineer, um, it really motivates me to try and reduce that waste, not just because, you know, those are my goals and that'll make more, more money, but just because, you know, we can't be putting that amount of, of waste in the garbage. Even if your process is running really, really efficiently, like you're making half a percent of waste. Um, if you're putting millions and millions of pounds out the door, that still adds up to quite a bit of, of stuff that's not making it through the supply chain. Mm -hmm. Krush, do you have anything to add on that, like inspiring people that want to change the world and make an impact? Yeah, definitely. Uh, you know, I like the packaging part. We need to make sure that, you know, it's not impacting the environment for sure and waste, right? Because, um, you know, 
there's there's um, there's the it's food, right? So nobody wants to waste the food. So companies are pulling millions and million tons of you know everyday production, and even if it's a 0.5 percent to Kasan's point, it's a lot of waste, right? So definitely a waste is something. Uh, no industry wants, and uh, you know, there's a lot in food industry. That's that uh, that's that's something which always interests me. Um, yeah, I think uh, you know, managing managing the waste properly will definitely impact the uh, the environment. Um, you know, we are throwing less. We're throwing less, uh, so which is good. Some some companies they reuse it. They they feed it to pig farms and this that. But you know, still it's it's less productive. So. I would say, I, I, you know, efficiency is everything. So if you're making your process more efficient, you know, there you go. You're not making any anything. You're not wasting any of your power or like food or material, nothing. So you need to be efficient. And you know, I always say to myself, try to make your life more efficient than yesterday. Be one person better than yesterday. So efficiency is something which always drives me. Well, and to your point, that that's the stuff, the stuff that machines can't do, the problem solving, the solutions, the thinking outside the box to make things mm -hmm. better. So, uh, mm -hmm. it, it, you know, it is such an important job. Yeah. Um, is there, um, we, we're getting close to the five o'clock mark, and I did promise I will, I will make sure you, you get away on time. Um, is there anything you wish that you had done differently? within your career I know it's you know by no means over for any of you you're all still you know in your prime um but anything you wish you'd done differently and so in that in terms of um that you maybe you wish you knew as a new grad when you're starting out interesting huh. question go ahead Prush, you go ahead first I'm still thinking of an answer oh. but... <laughs> I, I can take I can take it if if you want so actually I really liked what Swarna said um, in terms of you own your own development. Um, I was very lucky in that I got to work in a couple of different roles and areas um, and just was, you know, kind of diversified just because that's where the need was. But no one's going to take you aside and say, hey, I really think you should learn this because it'd be good for your career. It's up to you to identify what you want to learn to grow and then to find a way to get that done. Because even if you say, well, I want to learn about, um, change over improvement. If you say that, you know, no one's necessarily going to teach you change over improvement. You have to find out who can teach you that. You have to set up time with them to get it taught and, and really own your own development. Anyone else want to jump in there? I know I put you on the spot. <laughs> Um, yeah, I, like to, to me, you know, keeping short term goals is really important. A long term goal is good, but keeping a short term goal is important. Like I said, when I joined the, uh, you know, given go as an area lead, I know after my master degree, you know, taking an area lead in the full position, I was thinking a lot, right? But I told myself, you know, I'm going to learn a lot in the last, in the next couple of years. And then that is going to be my, you know, experience that's going to, you know, raise you up. So I kept the short-term goal. Okay, you're gonna go inside, learn, and then you apply. Then you grow. So keeping a short-term goal uh, is very important for young grads out there. You know, get your EIT done. You know, keep keep uh, a, a, the goal towards your career. Like, what are the things you need to do in your next five years or at least two years? Keep a short-term goal, and it's more effective than the long-term goal. And you keep uh, getting better every day, right? So that will, you know, when you look up today, I was writing down, okay, what I was doing for the last six years. I was like, okay, I did a lot. So, so you need to have your short term goals. Uh, that is more effective. Yeah, I mean, uh, go ahead, Shwana. I was just going to say, I think um, also think about your passion. What are you passionate about? Like, what is it that excites you in, in um, what you're doing? I think. Um, in the beginning, we, I know I, when I was looking for my first job, it was just about, okay, I need to find a job. I need to get the experience, build my resume. Um, but don't forget to remember and think about what are you passionate about? What are you, what excites you? It's, it's your career. Um, you own your development, but you also want to wake up every morning and be happy that you're in this field and that you're excited to do what you do. So I think that's definitely something um, I, I would say mm -hmm. kind of build on well, one of the things I, I, I know in this industry is it tends to uh, promote from within. And one of the challenges is that a lot of the time um, companies will hire people at those entry level positions. And when you've gone to university or 
college and you have your, your education, I think um, there's a little bit of uh, bringing expectations realistic um, for, for new grads and, and, and the industry as well, like meeting in the middle sort of thing. Um, and I've been doing a lot of that with that, that bridge conversation. You, know, you, you, you can't ask for this at the same time you can't pay this. Like it's, it, you've got to meet in the middle. And um, one of the things that's come out from all of these mentorship sessions is, you know, you do have to start somewhere. And I love what you've said about um, Carson specifically. You said, um, you, you both have actually, uh, you all have, um, around um, owning your career path because you could be in that entry level job, but don't like go in, do your best. But then have your eye on the prize. Like know that in a year, in two years, um, work hard. Know that that you want to be somewhere else, um, potentially in another role or a different department. And if you're working hard, mentors find you. That's one thing that seems to come through as a theme from these sessions. Um, like no one's going to come to you, like you said, Carson. No one's going to come and knock on your door and say, "How can I help you?" But if employers see something in you, a real determination and desire to do well, and you commitment and dedication they tend to take you under their wing and say I want to help you because you know you you're showing us the, the dedication and 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 that you want to do well in the company so I think that's one of the things that has come through from all of these conversations but definitely what uh, the, the three of you have shared today and um, I don't have um, any other questions I don't think any uh, any came through in the chat which isn't surprising <laughs> I'm used to that now um, but I'm really glad that you could all join. I hope you've enjoyed it. And if you have any final words, you know, um, please please go ahead. Anything, any final piece of advice you might give a, a student or a grad. Um, otherwise, uh, you know, thank you again for joining us today. And uh, we look forward to, to next week's session on sales and marketing uh, career paths. Thank you. Thank you so much for this thank opportunity. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. With people yeah. like you in the industry that come on to these things, we can we can do this sort of thing and inspire the next generation. So I'm so grateful. And uh, yeah, if anyone has any questions or is watching this afterwards and would like to connect with any of our speakers, um, please feel free to send me an email at nicole at foodgrads.com. And I'm sure I'll be able to bug them and get an answer for you um, <laughs> if, uh, if that's OK. And otherwise, good night. Thanks again. And Thank have you. a great evening. You too. Thank, Thank you. you. Take care. Take Thanks. care. Bye. Bye.